Welcome to another tutorial in my tutorial series CAS Computer Algebra System for Mathematical Technical Applications in Civil Engineering using Medkit Primus application. This tutorial is actually part of lecture 2 where we will deal with functions. This tutorial is the second one in this lecture, so here you should be already familiar with using functions in Medkit. If this is not the case, then please uh, start with the first uh, tutorial of this lecture where I give an introduction in using functions in MADCAD. What will we do in this tutorial? What you see here is already the printout of the solution. Uh, we have a single span beam with a constant linear load and uh, we have to evaluate, uh, not, you have to uh, determine the uh, support forces, but this will be, will be not part of this tutorial. We have to, but also the internal force functions, and this is more interesting for the for the shear, shearing force and for the moment. Yeah, and also we have to find out what are, where are the maximum values of those functions. To do this, we have to use the um, engineer's beam theory, also called Euler-Bernoulli theory, that means that if we integrate the um, loading function, uh, then we get the, uh, the shearing force. And if we integrate the shearing force, then we get the moment function. This is what we do. Yeah. So here uh, is the evaluation of the, of the reaction forces. And then here we have to set up our loading as a function. This we do in the third step. Then we have to, 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 to determine the shearing force function, as you see here. And um, and then the moment function, and then we have to calculate the maximum uh, values of the inner forces, which we do here. Uh, and then at the end, we have to visualize all the uh, evaluated functions and values in a diagram. This is what you learn in this tutorial. And uh, of course, um, I prepared already a template uh, so that we don't do uh, all this, uh, the things uh, for this um, task. Yeah. So concerning text entry and formatting, this was already part of the of the uh, lecture of the first lecture. So I, I don't want to repeat this here. Also, how you can insert images or the definition of input calculation parameters and using units. This is not part of this tutorial. So if you are interested in this, then please uh, watch the. Uh, uh, previous tutorials, uh, maybe also of, uh, of lesson of lecture one. Uh, we will focus on this one here uh, in this uh, template calculation of output values for using the MAT uh, tab. Then define mathematical functions. This will be part uh, work with these mathematical functions. Analyze those these functions. Uh, for instance, curve sketching. Uh, so the extreme values. Uh, where are they and uh, what is the amount of them or the the magnitude? Uh, we have to visualize the mathematical functions in a diagram, in a, in a plot called in MATCAD, is it called plot? So we, I will show you how you can work with this. We have to solve some equations derived from these functions and we have to uh, find some um, uh, some zeros of the functions yeah, with, with the built-in function root. And at the end, we also have to deal with some vectors in conjunction with functions. So let's go back to the beginning of this tutorial. And here we are. Here's our single span beam. Let's turn on the grid. So it's, I like to work with the grid when I develop such a worksheet because then it's easier to, uh, to adjust all those regions uh, in the right position to uh, you can use this grid uh, to find out the space, but not to, to set up the space between all those regions. Uh, anyhow, it's up to you if you also work, like to work with grids. And uh, yes, uh, coming back to this worksheet, uh, here is the, the system sketch yeah, with the parameter constellation. Actually, we have only two parameters, the, uh, the length of the beam and also the value of the loading, which is this one here. And uh, yes, so before we can uh, set up our, no, before, before we can determine our uh, inner, for, inner force functions, we have to calculate the reaction forces. I don't want to repeat this here. So this is already part of the tutorial. I said it already. If you are interested how you can do something like that, then please go to lecture one 
uh, in lecture one, I had an example where I, where I have where I have, where I have explained how you can do something like this. So we will skip this step and we will start with step number three, set up the loading function. And uh, before you set up a function in a computer algebra system, yeah, this is generally, this, this is not only as important for MATCAD, this I think it's, uh, it's important for all the computer algebra system. And it's also important if you work with function uh, uh, with, with a, in, a, in a technical background, yeah. Then you always have to define a domain. Yeah, what is a domain? Um, normally, uh, when you come from some with, with, a, with a mathematic background, uh, the mathematicians actually, uh, as far as I know and as far as I remember, to my my math classes, they dealt with functions in the eternity. Yeah. So they 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 were they started somewhere in the uh, in the minus infinite and they end up somewhere in the plus infinite and they made some uh, some theoretical considerations how this function will behave in this in the eternity. Here, if you work in the technical background, actually as engineers we don't have to deal with eternities. Yeah? So um, our systems we have to deal with they are they have they are limited. Yeah. And here, for instance, we have to deal with this beam, and this beam, of course, it is limited because it starts here uh, in our coordinate system, uh, which we have to set up in the space, and this is actually our zero, and it will end here at uh, L, at L x, yeah. And so, if we define a function, uh, because we have only one dimension, yeah, and this function, this is actually x is our parameter, and x is running between uh, zero and LX. Yeah, so here's the domain actually. And uh, this domain we have to set up. Yeah, because what is outside the domain, what happens before, yeah, but or, or what happens after with this function does not interest, uh, is not interesting for us. Yeah, so let's uh, define the domain in MATCAD so that we can use it. And uh, if you deal with functions in MATCAD, then it's always a good idea. Uh, to define a domain as a range or a step range variable. And um, yeah, now here we are in a, in a text region, a text block, and I would like to insert at, at this position my MS region to define my domain. Yeah, so I click behind this text and then I click here in the MS tab at this MS region. And here uh, we are. Let's zoom a little bit so that you maybe it's easier for you to see what happens here. And now I give uh, the domain a, uh, a name. And actually, our variable is x yeah, for our functions because x will change yeah, between the lengths of our beam. And now we have to define it. Yeah. For this, we need the definition symbol. That's this one here. And then we have to translate this uh, general expression here for the domain in an expression MATCAD can understand, can evaluate. Actually, MATCAD cannot deal with this uh, term, uh, despite the fact that it's also a mathematical expression, but MATCAD in this, um, uh, in, uh, in, in, our, in this purpose, MATCAD cannot deal with, with such an expression. We have to uh, transfer this in the range variable, and um, the range variable you find here also in the math tab. And then if you expand this uh, menu, then you find here the range variable. There are actually two of them. We have this one and this one here. Actually, if you use this uh, range variable, then you cannot set up the uh, step width. So the step width or the increment for this range will be always one. Yeah, you have a first value and a second and the end value and the increment will be always one. Here, if you use the step range, then you can also adjust the step width. Uh, so the increment is not automatically one. You can, in this case, for instance, the increment is two. Yeah, the first value is, the start value is one, and the second value is three. So the, 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 the difference between those is two. So the step width will be always two. So it's uh, one, three, and then five, and, and so on. So we will, we will use this one. Because we, we would like to set up the uh, the step width yeah, to make it not fixed, uh, I would like to have an a variable step width. So let's let's start with the first value. The first value is zero, yeah, because our x is is uh, a bigger um, 
greater than or equal to zero. So we we'll start with zero, and then they have to define the next value. Yeah. Uh, so and in our case, I would recommend to make it depending on the length. Yeah? So let's say we take our length and maybe we divide it with 100. Yeah? So so if the length it's uh, is small, yeah, then the the step width is is also small. But if the length is bigger, then this, the step width is also bigger. This is a question of performance. Yeah, if you in our system, it makes actually no difference. Yeah, but if you have some some uh, bigger systems and you have a lot of steps you have to calculate, then it could be some uh, time consuming. Yeah, and uh, or it will cost the performance of your worksheet. And that's why I would recommend to make it variable. Yeah. So, and then this is the next step. So it will be actually one centimeter in our case. So we will calculate every one centimeter a value. You can also make it smaller, you yeah, have from decimeter or whatever. Yeah, let's le leave it like this. And then we have to define the end value. The end value, of course, it's Lx because yeah, as I defined it here, x is less than or equal to lx. So here we are. This is our domain. And now let's define our function. Let's have a look back to our. Now maybe we can change this here. So to this uh, to this view, then we only see the content of the worksheet and not the the uh, the meta information in the header or the footer. And uh, let's have a look uh, to this um, to, to figure two. And uh, if you if you imagine, yeah, if you change x yeah, from zero to lx, the value of this uh, of the loading will always be constant. It's always qc, yeah, and that's why our function has only one value, and this is qc. So let's insert the function. The function should have a name. Uh, let's call the. At first, we have to insert a mass region into the text region. So here, let's click, and then we give it a name. We call it q. Subscript L stands for linear and C stands for the direction. And then we have to give the function a parameter anyhow. Yeah, and this is X, yeah, because X will change. And then we have to define the, the term of the function, and this is actually a constant. This is Q C. Yeah, this is this parameter, yeah, which we set up here actually. Yeah, and it will not change. Uh, uh, during uh, uh, it will not change within our domain. It will always be the same. Yeah. So this is actually uh, our function. I would recommend uh, if you define a function, this, then the, the second step should be to visualize the function. Yeah. To to uh, to, to check if the function we have defined uh, is uh, meets our expectations. So let's go to the last step uh, and visualize the function. Here at the last step, we do a visualization. Yeah, for the calculated values, and now let's insert a function, uh, not a function, a diagram. You find uh, to uh, to create diagrams in MathCAD, you have two possibilities. You can use the chart component, uh, which is quite sophisticated, and um, this I will show in another tutorial. Uh, the quick and dirty variant, uh, and in our case, it's it's more than enough. You can use the plots re register card. Let's click, uh, give it a click, and here we are. And then we at first we have to uh, to click with the cursor in your worksheet where you like to have this plot, and then you can insert here a plot. In our case, we would have to, we like to have a two-dimensional plot and an XY plot. Give it a click, and here we are. This is our plot. I like to uh, to change its size a little bit to use the whole um, space in my page. And then we have to set up here in this placeholder our function for the y-axis. And the function we defined was Q. The name was Q subscript uh, big, uh, capital L for linear and C for the direction. And the function parameter was X. And the unit for this function is actually kilo newton divided by per meter. And here in this placeholder, we have to, to insert our domain. This X in the unit is actually meter. Give it a click, and now here we are. You see, this is our domain is set up between uh, zero and seven meter, which is actually our current length. We can change it, yeah, if you want. Then we can change the length if to let's say 17 meters, yeah. And if you scroll down, then here this will also change, yeah, because we made our 
domain uh, variable. Now yeah, let's go back and change this back to seven meters. And here, this is our domain, which is automatically set up because this variable is defined here. And now we use this variable in this plot. Yeah. So the function is it's five and it's constants over the whole length of our beam. This is okay. So the first check uh, is working. Maybe let's change the color because I use uh, for the C direction, I use the color green actually. So we can uh, go to the blot uh, tab here and then can change the trace color from blue to green. And uh, but that is all. So let's go back to the next step here. And this we did already. And now we have to de de determine the shearing force function because now we have our loading function. And here is the, the formula for it. Yeah, of course, we can copy it, but I would like to show you how you can insert this formula, such kind of formula in, in MadCat. Um, uh, you have to take in consideration that this is actually uh, indefinite integration. That it means that we have a constant of integration. Uh, also in our formula. Yeah. So that's why, uh, because now we don't know the size, uh, or not the size, we, we don't know the value of our constant of integration. And that's why our function we see has temporarily two parameters, x anyhow, but it also has now the parameter C V, yeah, uh, yeah, C V, uh, because we don't know its value now yet. So two parameters, and now let's define it. I use the shortcut, yeah, the double point, and now um, I have to uh, hit minus. And here, let's go to the mass tab, and here to the operators, and here we have, we have the here the integral. Give it a click here. You have to placeholder for the uh, range. Yeah, it shall start at zero and it will end up at x. And here the function we like to integrate, and this is the loading function we have defined here. We can copy this to save some time. Oh, doesn't yeah, the problem is with the copying. Sometimes it's working, sometimes not. So let's no, let's uh, type it. Does not work. L, sorry, L dot C and in parentheses the parameter, but be careful. We use already the parameter X as a range variable for the, indic uh, for the integral. Uh, that's why we, there is a rule in mathematics. Uh, you cannot use the same parameter as a, as a function uh, parameter we like to integrate. That's why we have to rename it. Let's call it T and dt and now don't forget as i said we have to add the constant of integration and we call it cv cv stands for the shearing uh, force function okay here we are and uh, actually we can finish this yeah this is okay but if we do it like this then it's like a black box because we have no clue how this function actually looks like and i would recommend if possible uh to uh, avoid um, consecutive faults, um, that you visualize yeah, this um, this um, expression here. Yeah, that, that you uh, evaluate this integral, and you can do it do this like this. Sorry, and you have to use this uh, symbolic evaluation tools here, but it's only for visualization purpose. Yeah, you don't have to do this. Yeah. But if you don't do this, then you don't see the function actually. Yeah, it's then it's then you you it's like a black box. Yeah. Okay, let's go here. And um, yeah, if you just make this, then you then it looks like this. It might be also already okay. Yeah, but I like uh, to uh, um, set this a little bit up that I can change its appearance. At first, I like to collect uh, x. Uh, because if the expression is more sophisticated, then it's always a good idea to collect x. Because normally, if we use such kinds of expressions in mathematicians, then we collect x all the time. And uh, then it will not change now because this expression is not so sophisticated. But if you have a more sophisticated function, then this could um, be a nice way to um, 
for its appearance. So, and now we can also uh, use the, uh, actually the, uh, the variable names in these expressions and not the values. So let's go to, where is it? Oh, I always have to look for this. Oh no, where is it? It's here explicit. And then it looks like this, yeah. Uh, so it changed back to this one. But if you say that you would like to solve Q, the function in this expression, Q capital L dot C, only the name, then it looks like this. Yeah, this is a nicer view. This is actually our function. Yeah, that you see, it's a linear function. And uh, it has only, but it has to, to work with this function, we have an unknown variable, and this is CV, the integration constant. And this we have to evaluate. Yeah? Um, then we can use this function in our worksheet. So let's evaluate the uh, constant of integration. And for this, we can use so-called boundary conditions, because this is actually our temporary uh, general form of our function yeah but now we have to adjust this general form and let's have a look here back to our system and uh, as i said already before we have our function should work in this domain yeah within this domain it should work and the boundary condition could be that we know uh, which value should this function ha have at this point yeah uh, at the point zero yeah it should be equal to a c and uh, at, the, at this point, when it x is equal to Lx, then the, um, the shearing force function should be equal to minus Bc. Yeah? And this is this we call boundary condition. Yeah? And to adjust this, we can uh, determine C phi. So here are the two boundary additions, uh, sorry, conditions. Yeah? Now it's the, the mathematical expression for this. Yeah? At, uh, if we set up our temporary function at the point zero. Yeah, so x is known because it is, it's the point zero. Yeah, and then, but this is not this is not known yet. Yeah, but we know then this function should have the value ac. And at this point, this function should have the value minus, or should be equal to minus bc. We have only one unknown variable, cv, uh, but we have two conditions. Yeah, so it's, we are in a very comfortable uh, situation we we need actually only one and i would recommend to use this one because it makes it easier yeah if you add up here the zero yeah then this is will be uh, will be zero as well and then you know that uh, cv is equal to ac but let's let's madcap do this maybe uh you have a more a complicated uh, example and then it, it might be not so easy to do uh, to do this uh, in uh, by yourself. So let's let's Madcat do this evaluation. How can you do this? We have to type the name we, uh, for the variable we like to evaluate. This is actually CV. Uh, let's define it. We use this boundary condition. We can copy paste it, but uh, take in consideration for such for such an equation we need this black equal symbol. Yeah, don't mix this up. Yeah, with this equal symbol or with this one here. Yeah. Uh, we need this back equal symbol, and this you find here. Yeah, comparison. This is, means equal to. Yeah, uh, but anyhow, let's copy this to save some time. Let's put it into this placeholder. Now we have our equation, and this equation we can solve. Yeah, uh, and for this we can use this uh, symbolical operations, and here we have this solve. Let's solve it to uh, CV because CV is unknown. And now we get its value. No, we don't get it. So there is some mistake. Let's have a look. Where is it? So being honest, actually, I stopped the recording and looked for the, for the error. And uh, I just copied here CV uh, from here and, um, and paste it here. Here and here to make sure I, I use the same expression, yeah. And then now it worked. Yeah. Sometimes if you change the the uh, expression a little bit, yeah, or really uh, I don't know how, and then you get this error. And that's why I recommend if you have lots of those little bits uh, complicated expression, like we like we use in civil engineering as yeah, those complicated variable names with lots of subscripts and so on, then 
uh, you should copy them yeah to avoid some to avoid clerical mistakes yeah which are which can be really annoying here on Madcat. So, but I don't like actually its this appearance here. So let's change it to explicit. Here, did it, did, here. This was explicit, and then we have to say we would like to see a C. Oh, was a mistake. Of VC, not AC, VC. So then it looks like this. Yeah, so you see CV is equals EC. I know this is actually quite easy to solve. Yeah, uh, but anyhow, we want to know, we want to learn how we can do something like this with MedCat. And now we can also evaluate this with numerically if we want to. We can do it like this. Yeah, but I don't uh, I don't want to recommend this. Yeah, you will see later what happens. Or maybe maybe let's leave this like this, and then because now we would like to to uh, when we know uh, the and we have to uh, de determine uh, the constant of integration C three, then we can uh, then we can define our final function which uh, for our shearing force which only has one parameter x, and let's do this. Yeah, let's. This is we do the same name, yeah, but, but with only one parameter, x. And what we are doing, we just uh, calling the temporary function and hand over our x and set up our CV in this function which we have evaluated so far. And this we can also visualize if you want to. Yeah, I told you. Mainly, if you are a beginner, you should visualize your functions. To it's also this is also one kind to to check those functions for plausibility. So how we can do this? Again, let's go to uh, uh, symbolic and then to explicit. Do what the fuck here? And uh, then it looks like this. Not so nice. But if you say okay, we would like to see we see. Oh, sorry. We see, then it looks like this. And if you don't like this one, then we can also say, okay, CV don't like to see as well. And it looks like this. But you see, it's the same value like here. Yeah. If you don't like this, then uh, then don't do this evaluation here, this numerical evaluation. Just delete this, and then it looks nice here. So yeah, here we are. We have our shielding force function, which we have uh, determined. Uh, by integrate indic, uh, integrate the loading force and the next now we checked it up and the next check should be the visualization of this function. Let's go back to the last step and uh, visualize this function. Here we are in our diagram. I have to make it a little bit smaller now that it's not too big for this page. And uh, can we move this? We can also move this here to the left side. And so I click. At, uh, at the uh, parameters of my x-axis. And then we go to the plot tab again, and here we can add a trace. Yeah, And if you click uh, before this uh, um, parameter, then the, uh, no, in front of this, uh, in front of this parameter, then this uh, trace will be uh, also at previous to this parameter, if you click uh, behind this parameter like this, then this, or maybe like this, then this uh, trace will be uh, uh, after this parameter. So like this, yeah. And uh, okay, let's call this, no, let's, this was the name of this function was VC, parameter was X and the unit is kilonewton. Let's have a look how it looks like, yeah, the, the, uh, the x uh, parameter is, is the same. Yeah, so with this, we don't have to change. We can use the same parameter for those two functions concerning the x-axis. Now here's our force, uh, shearing force function. Now let's change the the uh, the color. Uh, it's also green because it's the same direction like the loading and the thickness maybe is a little bit thicker like this because it's more important. Yeah, and here we are. Yeah, and this is 17.5. Here again, 17.5. I think this, uh, 
course of this function meets our expectation. Yeah. So now we can determine the uh, moment function. Here we are. Because now we have our um, shielding force function. Now let's integrate our shielding force function for the moment function. Uh, yeah, maybe you can copy this yeah, here to save some time and just change it because the workflow is more or less the same. Yeah, this time we call it M Y and the parameters are the same, but we, we uh, rename the integration, uh, the concept of integration CM. This is the same, the function will change. This is actually V C of T dt and here is CM. Uh, be careful, yeah. If you copy and paste and then you change it, make sure that you don't miss any change. Yeah, uh, often I have the problem that uh, I copy and paste it, and but then I forget something to change, and this could be, um, uh, this could uh, lead to some errors, yeah, which are really could can be really annoying. So sometimes, uh, yeah, this copy and paste method has also some disadvantages. This we also have to change here. It's actually if we see and now let's have a look yeah we get the arrow message yeah okay yeah here this comes to this green message here and uh, because i found out um the last time when i did this uh, example was in the year 24 uh, 2014 and uh, i used an alter release of madcat and there actually i could use this explicit um keyword now in this release of Madcat it doesn't work anymore. I don't know if this is a, if it's a, a fault of mine or if it if, if they change something in the functionality of explicit or maybe it is a bug of Madcat. I don't know, uh, but we can't use this ex explicit at this integration level anymore. It will not work. Yeah, but maybe in some uh, in some new releases it it can work again. Yeah, I don't know when you watch this tutorial. Maybe if you use already. Uh, Madcat Prime 8 or 9 or maybe 7 point uh, whatever, yeah, then it maybe you can try. Maybe it's working again. Have a look. Uh, now we can only do this. Like. But it's still for uh, maybe if you like to check the function, then it might be still uh, uh, an, an, a possible workflow. Okay, here we are. We see that now we have a quadratic, uh, quadratic function with a linear part, and this is our quadratic part, and this is the constant part, and this we have to evaluate, yeah, this is the uh, constant of integration. Yeah, we can do the same, like we have done this with the shearing force function. Yeah, we have those two uh, boundary conditions because we know that at the beginning of our beam, yeah, at the support, yeah, the, the, the supports are not, um, they are not able to um, to um, to to take over uh, here some moments. Yeah, so that's why our moment function should be zero here and also zero here. Yeah, and this is our boundary conditions uh, condition or conditions because we have actually two of them. And again, we have only one unknown variable in this uh, function, so we only need one boundary condition. Uh, and again, we can use here this uh, expression. Ah, maybe let's let's enter it there. Yeah. Uh, but at least we can copy this one here. Again, I would prefer this one because it's easier. Yeah, as you know, uh, if you insert zero here, then this is uh, it's uh, uh, it's zero, and this is also zero, and then you see that cm is also zero. Yeah. But let's let's do this with Madcat to show you a workflow. How you can do something like this with Madcat. So C M for our constant of integration. And now let's insert our no. Here we have. Ah oh yeah. Then we have to. The operator this black equal symbol here, and um, it's zero. And now let's solve this. Symbolically here, this one. <sighs> here, solve. Uh, solve for C M, not N M. You see it's zero. No, it's not. 
again we have some yeah we get the same maybe it's like again the problem with the with the name so let's try this here to make sure if you copy and paste this is this uh, could be happen very often yeah so this i have done yeah now it's working just copy and paste this parameter and here we are and uh, we had the same problem here yeah sometimes this could happen if you copy and paste if you write it completely new uh, then this should not such kind of uh, error message should not appear or it should should be it should not be, uh, appear so often so now we have evaluated uh, cm now we can define our final moment function and uh, this is m y of x only one parameter now and uh, we just call our temporary moment function and hand over our x and tell them you sh it, it should use cm which we have evaluated before here let's just have a look at this function unfortunately we cannot use explicit here but maybe if we if we, if we but we, we can use at least such kind of expression here and for uh, plausibility checks it could be also nice to do this one at least so let's say here collect x and here is our function yeah, we have a quadratic function function only with the quadratic part and the linear part and the constant part is uh, is zero okay now let's visualize this function let's go back to our um, diagram here and here let's add some new um, let's add some new function and here or trace in this case yeah add a trace and this is actually m y of x and the unit is kilonewton times meter so let's have a look yeah and this looks nice yeah it's zero at the beginning of our beam at the support here at the end of our beam the support b it's also zero and it has its maximum value here uh, but the color does not match because the color of the y-axis is actually blue uh, i actually I, by the way i use the same colors like in autocad yeah an uh, autocad the uh, x uh, direction is red the uh, y direction is blue and the c direction is green yeah and that's why sh only if you are wondering why i uh, i'm um, consider so much the colors so here let's make this a little bit thicker yeah so it looks nice and yes um now we have to find out the extreme values yeah what is the uh, the maximum value of our um, shearing force function and where is it yeah this is nice to see here because in our support we have the maximum values at the uh, at the uh, location here is zero and here it's seven and when it comes to the maximum moment of course in our symmetrical system and um, with our constant load it is actually the middle of our beam yeah but yeah it maybe the, if the system is not so easy to uh, to evaluate uh, then uh, you can also uh, take the uh, the the differential uh, relationship between those two function consideration then because uh, you see that if the uh, if the shearing force with, with which actually the first the uh, the derivative of the moment function if this has a zero then you see uh, the zero point of this function is actually the location of the maximum moment. Yeah. And uh, so we have to, to find the zero of the shearing force. And then if we, if we know it, yeah, if we know where it is, then we also know the, uh, the location of maximum moment function. If you know the location, then we can uh, use the location as a parameter of the moment function to evaluate the function and to get the value of the maximum this function okay let's do this so here uh, when it comes to the shearing force we have actually two uh, values yeah so let's give it a name for the location uh, let's call it x yeah because it's somewhere at the, at the, at the x axis and the v stands for for shear and max for the maximum values and uh, now we have to deal with the position, define it. And uh, actually there are two values there for this. So let's um, 
use a vector because we would like to have two values in one variable. For this, we have to use vectors. And here, this is actually zero, and the second value is L. X, and we can evaluate this. And so we see at, at, at zero meter, we have one uh, uh, maximum of the shearing force, and at seven meters, we have one. So if we know the position, yeah, then we can put this position into our shearing force to get the uh, related values. So let's, the name of this is V C point max. And uh, it's de defined as our shearing force with the location of our maximum values as parameters. So actually we can evaluate this yeah, and we get the values, but I have to mention that uh, our shearing force, yeah, which we find here, uh, this is the function for the shearing force, yeah, this one here, yeah, expect actually uh, not a, 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 um, a vector, it, it, it expects x as a scalar, yeah. Uh, we have luck that MadCat uh, ignores this and does not uh, sh show any error message, uh, but it's only uh, the case of luck. If you don't have this luck, then you can tell the function that it that it choose uh, that it should use those uh, values as a scalar. Yeah, this this means vectorization. Yeah, and the vectorization operator you find here. And uh, to make sure that it works, then you can also use this expression. Yeah, in our case it's not necessary because it also works without without vectorization. But I can promise you, you will have re examples uh, where you get exact this error message that the function expects a scalar, and that's why it will not evaluate the this um, uh, this parameter, and for this you can use the vectorization uh, command. Yeah, so uh, vectorization, by the way, means that it takes uh, every um, value of this vector as a scalar. Yeah, and the end will will be also a vector. Yeah, it it will start with this value, evaluates this, and it it uh, in the Evaluation will be this uh, this value, and then at the second value will be this one. Yeah, we will evaluate, and the the result will be this value, and so on. Yeah, this means vectorization. Yeah, and sometimes MedCat does this automatically, but sometimes not. Okay, so let's go. Let's go. Let's continue with the uh, uh, location of our moment. Maximum moment. Uh, I told already. Uh, I said already before. Yeah, this actually we have to find this zero. Yeah, and to find the zero, we can use uh, the uh, root function. Yeah, uh, with the root function, you can uh, find the zeros. Yeah, of uh, of any function. Uh, if you the root function, you find here in functions, and if you go to all functions, you have to. Uh, I just enter its name here, and then. Uh, yeah, and here in solving, yeah, solving here is the root function. Yes, and if I hover over it, you see that uh, the root function has four parameters. Yeah, and we have to set up. Yeah, and the first the function name, then the function parameter. You find you would like to find the zero four, and then you also have because it's an an iterative uh, method. You also have to define the the range yeah, where you expect the roots yeah, because uh, normally a, a function when it when the function um, uh, lives into in, uh, uh, in in infinite space yeah then you then it, then there, there there could be lots of roots yeah and the next problem is uh, not that uh, there could not that there could be lots of zeros yeah and the problem is that which zero you would like to, you are looking for yeah. Um, Actually, such a function could have uh, infinite zeros. Yeah, this is one problem, and the next problem is where such an iterative uh, method should start. Yeah, uh, and that's why you have to define the range. Okay, let's give it a name. This variable I would call it x um, m for moment, max for the maximum moment, and then let's call the root function. And at first we have to Insert the name for the function you like to find the root, and this is this one. And then the next parameter is x, 
Yeah, if you wondering why I should have to mention X because this this function only has one parameter, but uh, this is our in our uh, example this, this function only has one parameter. But please remember, yeah, we started actually with where is it here with two parameters, yeah, and of course such a function could also have two, three, or whatever uh, parameters, and that's why you have to have to if you have a function with more than just uh, one one parameter, then you have to also to mention for which parameter you like to find the root, yeah, and that's why this parameter here is necessary. Okay, then the range, yeah, and if you have, oh, we can do it here, yeah. If we uh, look at our uh, diagram, that we see that this is actually our range, yeah, for our function. We can, or let's say we can we can use the domain, yeah, between uh, the zero and lx. We would find there's only one uh, zero, yeah, and you can also use two point eight and. 4.2, but be careful. Yeah, if you change the length of the beam, yeah, then this does not work anymore. Yeah, and that's why I would recommend in our case the domain is a nice range to find the root because there is only one. Yeah, and the root is also easy to find. Yeah, be careful with the root function. Uh, sometimes there are, can be some situation where the root function does not work. I can give you an example. I hope it works here with my pen. Okay, let's do it in in red here. And if you have such kind of function, yeah, and this is uh, more or less really vertical, then this root function could not sometimes could not find I cannot find uh, a solution. Yeah, then you have to have to uh, have to deal with another method. Yeah. Take this in consideration. So the root function does not always work, yeah, because this is actually uh, uh, we we can have something like this, yeah, in civil engineering, but in mathematical this is actually not possible. If, if this is really vertical, yeah, then it's uh, if you are really um, if you are really strict, yeah, uh, in for mathematical reason, then this is not a function anymore, yeah. Uh, I just mentioned this because in civil engineering we have such kind of functions, yeah, and that's why. Um, uh, then you have to have, uh, you have to 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 change another workflow. Okay, let's cancel this. Okay, and now uh, uh, the area or the the range is actually zero. Yeah, in which we would like to find the function. So zero and L. Ah, shit. Was a shortcut, some short L subscript X. So let's evaluate this, and here we are. It's 3.5 in our system. This is quite obvious. So, and now uh, if we know the position of our um, maximum uh, moment, yeah, then we can also evaluate the value, and uh, this we call m y dot max. And we take our to uh, to the, the determine this value. We have to use our moment function, and we have to insert our uh, evaluated position. It is x m max, and let's evaluate this. And let's change the unit to kilonewton times meter. And here is the value for this. We can also visualize those. Um, Values in our uh, in our diagram. Let's do this. Maybe let's start with the uh, absolute. No, not the absolute. With the maximum um, shearing uh, shearing uh, force values. Yeah. For this, we have to add some new trace. Yeah, because there are actually two vectors. Yeah. This one and this one. No, sorry. This one here and this one. Also this one here. And this one, this is for x, and this is for y axis. And uh, so, to uh, and because we have for this, we cannot eat, we cannot use uh, to visualize this. We cannot use this x parameter here. Yeah, this will not work because we have to visualize those two vectors. And that's why I added trace before those three functions. So that's why I click here, and then I go to uh, to die plot. And here I add a trace, and um, 
here let's the name was v v c dot max and the unit is kilonewton kilonewton only kilonewton and here we have because now we get an error because it does not match to this range variable because the range variable x only works with those three functions but not with a vector so here we have to add a trace yeah corresponding trace yeah this a vector of the same length of the same size and this was actually the name of this was x um v no small uh, lower lower case lee and max and the unit was meter here we are now it looks like this because actually it, it, uh, it's inserted those those two points yeah this point here zero and this one and alex and this one and it um connected it with a line yeah but we don't want to have uh, we don't like this appearance so let's change it here let's click at the trace and go to the trace color and we like to have it in green then let's go to a symbol and we would like to use some symbols maybe those points here and then let's turn off no the point yeah let's turn turn off the the line now we have here the points and uh, but we can make this points a little bit bigger so we have to, to change the thickness of this trace so here let's make it like this now you see the maximum values here those actually only those two points here this point and this one yeah when it comes to the maximum moment yeah this we can also visualize but this is not a vector anymore this is only two values yeah this one and this one and for this we can we can use here this and vertical marker yeah let's add a vertical marker for the x-axis and here let's insert the value you would like to show here and it's actually x the name was x m max don't forget to uh set up the unit otherwise you get an error yeah and here if i click uh, uh here then it looks like this yeah because you have to yeah it should be unitless yeah so you have to uh, you have to um divide it with the unit like this and it should be meter and now it works yeah we can set this up in it, the appearance maybe you like to have it thinner and here another line type so now it looks like this it's the same we can do with this uh, with the y-axis then we have to add a horizontal marker here let's enter the value it is it was called the variable was name is m y dot max divided by its unit kilo newton times meter and now let's uh, set this up it is, should be in yeah the, the color is okay but we like to have it thinner and this line type so here we are yeah if you don't like the this background you can make it transparent and then we have visualized everything we have calculated so far uh, in our worksheet in this diagram you see with this uh with this uh, quick and dirty uh, diagram here in MadCat, you can already visualize a lot. Yeah, if you but if you like to have more access, yeah, of the concerning the appearance of your diagram, I would recommend this chart component, which is, which is actually quite new. With this, you can do more, but it's also more sophisticated and uh, and to show that it's also more time consuming. And that's why I prefer this one because this tutorial is already quite long, despite the fact that I have used a uh, uh, templates so we did not do everything yeah, of this uh, example but i hope you could follow me and uh, yes i thank you for your attention and maybe see you in another tutorial